Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 17.4 monohybrid inheritance. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 17.4 you need to describe the terms inheritance, genotype, phenotype, dominant allele, recessive allele, homozygous and heterozygous, use genetic diagrams and Punnett squares to predict the results of monohybrid cross and interpret pedigree diagrams for the inheritance of a given characteristic. For extended, you also need to explain how to use a test cross to identify an unknown genotype, describe codominance with reference to the inheritance of ABO blood groups, and describe sex linkage with reference to colour blindness. There's a lot of information here and I'll move quite quickly, so make sure you pause the video and study the diagrams as you go. Inheritance is the transmission of genetic information from generation to generation. In topic 17.1, we learned that chromosomes carry genetic information in the form of DNA, a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a specific protein, and alleles are different versions of the same gene. Since we possess two copies of each chromosome, one from our mother and one from our father, we also have two alleles of each gene. When gametes are produced, the pairs of chromosomes divide, meaning only one allele of each gene is passed on to the next generation. During fertilization, the nuclei of the male and female gametes fuse, resulting in a new and unique combination of alleles. The genetic makeup of an individual, including all of its genes and alleles, is called genotype. While the observable features of an organism, like eye colour, hair colour, height and blood type, are collectively termed phenotype. Now, not all alleles present in the genotype are expressed in the phenotype of an organism. A dominant allele, represented by a capital letter, is an allele that's always expressed if it's present in the genotype. A recessive allele, represented by a lowercase letter, is an allele that's only expressed when there is no dominant allele of the gene present in the genotype. In other words, a recessive allele must be inherited from both parents for the trait to be visible in the phenotype. If both a dominant and a recessive allele are present, the dominant allele will override the recessive allele, resulting in the expression of the trait that it codes for. In the case of eye colour, the allele that codes for brown eyes is dominant, and the allele that codes for blue eyes is recessive. This means that if both alleles are present in a person's genotype, their eyes will be brown and not blue. If an individual possesses two identical alleles of a particular gene, they are said to be homozygous for that gene. If, however, they have two different alleles, for example one that codes for brown eyes and one for blue, they are referred to as heterozygous for the gene. When two identical homozygous individuals breed, all offspring will have the same alleles and consequently the same phenotype as the parents. This is referred to as pure breeding. If, however, both parents are homozygous for different alleles, the offspring will all be heterozygous. Heterozygous individuals are not capable of pure breeding as their offspring may have different combinations of alleles and consequently different characteristics. Let's apply all the terms we just learned to an example. So here we're looking at the inheritance of coat colour in mice, where the dominant allele, uppercase B, produces black fur, and the recessive allele, lowercase b, produces brown fur. When two heterozygous black mice are crossed, the resulting offspring will inherit one allele from each parent. In this case, the possible combinations are uppercase B, uppercase B, that is homozygous dominant, two times uppercase B, lowercase b, that is heterozygous Zygous, and lowercase b, lowercase b, that is homozygous recessive. The dominant allele determines the phenotype, resulting in a phenotypic ratio of 3 to 1 for black to brown mice in the F1 generation. In other words, we would expect roughly 75% of offspring to be black and 25% to be brown. A Punnett square is a useful tool for working out and displaying the outcomes of a genetic cross. The two boxes along the top are labelled with the genotypes of the gametes of one parent, and the boxes down the left hand side are labelled with the genotypes of the gametes of the other parent. Let's consider the inheritance of flower colour in pea plants, where the dominant allele produces purple flowers and the recessive allele produces white flowers. When a heterozygous purple flowered plant is crossed with another heterozygous purple flowered plant, 
plant. Possible combinations in the resulting offspring are uppercase P, uppercase P, two times uppercase P, lowercase P, and lowercase P, lowercase P. The dominant allele determines the phenotype, so we have a phenotypic ratio of 3 to 1 for purple to white flowers. When a heterozygous purple flowered plant is crossed with a homozygous white flower plant, the possible combinations of alleles in the resulting offspring are uppercase P, lowercase P, and lowercase P, lowercase P. This means that 50% of the flowers in the first generation will be purple and 50% will be white. A pedigree diagram is a visual representation of the inheritance pattern of a specific trait or characteristic within a family or group of individuals. In a pedigree diagram, individuals who exhibit the trait or characteristic of interest are represented by filled-in symbols, usually circles for females and squares for males. The diagram typically consists of multiple generations, with each generation represented by a horizontal row. The oldest generation is usually placed at the top, and subsequently generations are placed below. By analyzing a pedigree diagram, you can identify the inheritance pattern of the characteristic. For example, cystic fibrosis is coded for by a recessive allele. Therefore, if an individual inherits the condition, we can be sure that both their parents, provided they don't also have the disease, are carriers. A carrier may be depicted by a half-shaded symbol. If two carriers mate, the chances that their child will inherit the disease is 25%, which could influence whether or not they decide to have children together. Okay, so that's everything for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section. So you need to explain how to use a test cross to identify an unknown genotype. So a mouse with black fur could have the genotype uppercase B, uppercase B, or uppercase B, lowercase B. One way to find out is to use a test cross, which in this case would involve crossing the black mouse with a known homozygous recessive mouse, that is lowercase B, lowercase B. If the black mouse is homozygous, all the offspring will be heterozygous black mice, with one dominant and one recessive allele. If, however, the black mouse is heterozygous, we would expect 50% of the offspring to be black heterozygotes and 50% to be brown homozygotes. Therefore, if any of the resulting offspring are brown, we can be sure that the black mouse is in fact heterozygous, uppercase B, lowercase b. Next, you need to understand the term codominance. So codominance is a situation in which both alleles in heterozygous organisms contribute to the phenotype. This can be seen in the inheritance of human ABO blood groups. In the ABO system, there are three alleles, written IA, IB, and IO, but four phenotypic blood groups, A, B, O, and AB. If a person inherits alleles for A and B from their parents, their blood group will be AB, because A and B are co-dominant. However, the alleles for groups A and B are both completely dominant to the allele for group O. Therefore, a a group A person could have the genotype AA or AO, a group B person could be BB or BO, but a group O person will always be OO. Now blood group O can be inherited even if neither parent shows this phenotype. If, for example, the mother and father are both AO, there will be a 3 to 1 ratio of A to O blood groups in the resulting offspring. We'll move on now to sex linkage, but I recommend you pause the video for a moment to study the Punnett square. A sex-linked characteristic is a feature in which the gene responsible is located on a sex chromosome, which makes it more common in one sex than the other. In addition to carrying genes related to sexual development, the sex chromosomes also carry genes that code for other characteristics. As we learned in topic 17.1, females possess two X chromosomes, while males have one X and one Y. Y chromosomes are shorter than X chromosomes, so some alleles present on the X chromosome are absent on the Y. This means that in males, even if the allele is recessive, it's certain to be expressed due to the lack of a corresponding allele on the Y chromosome. In females, the chances of a recessive allele being expressed are much lower, as the allele on the other X chromosome could be dominant. Red-green colour blindness is a sex-linked characteristic. The allele is only present on the X chromosome and is recessive. If a female who carries the allele for colour blindness were to mate with a male with healthy colour vision, possible genotypes in the offspring would be X uppercase C X uppercase C, that is a female with healthy vision, X uppercase C X lowercase C, a female carrier of the colour blindness allele, X uppercase C Y, a male with healthy vision, and X lowercase C Y, a male 
male with colour blindness. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 17.4, monohybrid inheritance. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 18.1, variation.